Thank you so much for joining me for this Southern Pines Classified something or other nine hole cup. In this video, I'll walk you through each of the nine holes of the Southern Pines course and how I generally intend to play them with my rookie account. You're going to have to play this course according to your clubs, your balls, and your skill level. I don't know everything about this tournament yet, but I do know about these nine holes. So I hope this video can help you get your notes ready so we can go low on the weekend and go for the banners. Good luck, everybody. Let's go. All right. Hey, guys, here we are. Hole number one of this Southern Pines something or other. I don't know. Classified tournament nine hole here. Max top. And we're going to go with like about uh, half a bar or so of side spin, depending on the wind that we're going to get here. And I'm only needing to use a little bit of overpower because I have a tailwind. But if you're playing this shot in a strong crosswind or possibly a headwind, you know, we're going to have to be really careful. The idea is use overpower as necessary adjust 10% max and make sure to bounce in that little spot between the bunkers and roll as far as you can if you've got a Thor's hammer or something like that great option right there now second shot I'm checking the distance of my thorn club as you can see we're playing this one at maximum club distance and we're going to do a 10% adjustment here now I'm coming in with about three and a half bars of backspin which is going to turn out to be a good play for me in the long run however uh, you'll see I come in just a little bit hot. I would say with this kind of strong tailwind, four bars of backspin back spin, uh, likely would have set me up just a little bit safer. But you know, I'm not going to be coming in short, not with this kind of heat. So you just kind of have to feel the shot sometimes. Do be aware that this green does slope from our right to the left. So if you come in left of the pin, you're going to get a little kind of roll down the hill there. But we're not going to do that. We're going for the pin. I'll see you on hole number two. Welcome to hole number two. This one sets up from the front tee reasonably straightforward. I'm giving this one with a katana ball. Sniper club, maximum right spin, and I do have just a tiny little half a bar of backspin here in this tailwind. Understand that you may need to change that based on the wind we see. And now with my level six sniper, you can see that I have the red ring touching the rough on the right. And that second bounce is just up past the fringe. Do be aware of that. And also understand that a higher level sniper, you're going to have to use um, probably a different ring reference. So look at that second bounce and see how I use that right spin, the right curl, just with the right edge of the ball to the outside. It gives us a little chance to roll it down. Good luck. Let's go. Let's go. Good luck, everybody. Hole number three is the kind of par five that really, really benefits from having higher level clubs. You can play a big topper here. You can play an extra mile. And a Zerk is what I'm doing. This tailwind makes this really, really helpful. Um, definitely need to go maximum overpower here. Push your shot to max and just get as far down this fairway as you possibly can. As you can see, we're playing here with an extra mile level four. Having a higher level club is going to get you way closer and it's going to give you different options. But this is a rookie playthrough. So then I'm coming in with my longest club in the bag, the big dog. And I'm looking over here to the right hand side. I've played this one comfortably through the last tournament. A couple bars of side spin, as you can see. And I'm basically using like two to three left and one like one and a half left of the new side spin values and about two or so bars of top spin. I adjust this shot at 10% maximum distance. And the idea is I just want to bounce to the right side of that bunker and roll it up green side. Now, you definitely could trickle onto the green here for a little bit difficult putt. I am giving it a tiny bit of curl there. So just have to size up the situation depending on where you are. You might want to bring a Goliath with you if you have a longer drive. You might end up a little closer. But the thing is for me, I want to get the Eagle here. I don't want to make any careless moves. So I have a Firefly. I've got 20% there. I like using the 20% at club distance method these days. And that's what I definitely recommend. So take a look here and just set up your shot as necessary. There is other options. There's a sand bump that you can play on this hole. You know, there's way more 
things that you can do. But this is a nice, straightforward, and makeable eagle that we need to compete. Good luck. Hole number four is an awesome par four when you're looking to get a drop. I bring an extra mile in a quasar here, and as you can see, I'm giving it four and a half bars of top spin, two bars of right spin. And the idea is that I'm setting this shot up a couple of, you know, like green squares away from that fairway bunker. And we're just going to hit perfect here and no overpower. I'm not really trying to get super duper long here. I'm trying to get to this sort of repeatable position so that we can leave ourselves in a good distance for a sniper rough bump. Now, that sniper rough bump here, I'm going to play this shot at 10% max. And the idea is we're really going to use about one bar of right spin and, you know, as much backspin as needed depends on the wind that we have anywhere from like one back to to half a bar or so of top spin really just depending you can play this shot at different elevations i have played this one successfully one to one before it, it really just depends on the wind that we're going to get in the tournament but ideally this is kind of the idea we center up in this nice patch between the rough and the two bunkers and just got to hit perfect, baby. I always think that this shot is a really, really good opportunity. And I'll be looking to get a couple of booms here in the tournament. That is for absolute sure. Good luck, guys. Let's head on to the next one. Hole number five, this part three, I can think of at least four or so different ways to play it. I'm going to show you my two favorite that I think give you a chance for a drop. Max left with this Quasar and about three bars of backspin. Setting up with a quarterback, and I'm looking to do a little bounce off this island. I'm playing this adjustment at 10% max. Now, this shot is... It's scary. I mean, I don't necessarily think that this is the absolute best path, but I do think it's better than coming in from the left side or from the right side. I gave it a tiny little bit of curl here um, because you'll see you really need a perfect win to execute from this island. However, it gets you nice and close, a lot closer than I've usually come from playing it in on the right side. I'm going to show you the rough bump in the next option. That's my favorite. Okay, so hole five, this is the route that I think everybody's going to actually mostly often play in the tournament. Power three ball and a quarterback. Now, I wish I had a QB 10. Then we would have just that little bit extra reach that we need to set this one up where we want. So we end up coming in with four bars of backspin. But as you can see, I'm sort of adjusting in overpower a little bit. So we make our 10% maximum adjustment here uh, down into the water, if you will. So not only are we a little tiny bit short, um, but I'm also adjusting downhill. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push back up, you know, just about it's like a quarter of a ring, probably about a half a ring on average is what you're going to want to do. And I did give it just a tiny little, tiny little touch of overpower. So it's not the most perfect setup, but as you can see here, I do believe this is the best opportunity to get the drop in the weekend. Good luck. All right, so hole number six, this par five, I'm going to show you two completely different ways to play this hole. The first way is really the most basic and the way I would suggest for a, for a more true rookie player or someone who's not as comfortable taking a bit more risk. I'm setting up here with an extra mile and a Titan. Now, you do see me giving it four bars of topspin. Be very, very careful. This is only an extra mile level four. If you have like an extra mile six or seven or something like that, just be very careful not to go too far here. Yeah, you just want to get it down nice and close to the right-hand side and as far down here as possible without going over, just like we've done right here. So for the second shot, then, I'm bringing the big dog each and every time. And ultimately, you know, max top, max right is really, I think, where you want to be here. And we're going to give maximum right curl. You do see that I'm trying to kind of determine how much top spin should I use. You know, bottom line, I end up coming up a bit short here. So I think max top spin in this wind condition would be, would be perfect. So that would probably hopefully just get us to the green. Nonetheless, though, just give this one max right curl. And I'm giving it like a lot of overpower. Almost max, if not all the way. And the thing is, you're going to just bounce here nicely before this bunker. That's why you need that curl. That bunker is 100% in play. And as you can see, a little more topspin. And we could have rolled that one a little bit closer. But nice, flat, makeable wedge play here. I've got 20% there for the wedge, as I always will. You can eyeball it. You can play it whatever technique you like. I highly recommend Jared A's video. 
the Endbringer School. I think it is, for me, a, just a game changer that I just want to show from the rooftops and share with everyone because it is just such a good, good system. And ultimately, you know, that's what you need to do here. You need to just clean it up, stick to the fundamentals, and go for the Eagle. It is an absolutely almost impossible hole to get an Albatross on from this side. But the next example, I'll show you another way to get it done. All right, so hole number six, this is the spicy version. Power three ball and a quarterback. I'm giving it like one and a half current top spin and about two bars of top spin. So two top, one and a half right. Now with the quarterback level seven, you see that ball guy just on the left edge of that red bush. And I also have just about 90% of the right curl here to go along with that max over power. It's going to depend on the wind. We do have that kind of like left to right tailwind in this example. So we have to break it down. We have to see what we get in the tournament. But get the ball down here and come in with your big dog. As you can see, I've got the top of the yellow ring here just about but not quite touching the fairway. And I give this one six bars of top spin. It really is a bit of a bit of a crapshoot here to uh, to try to line this one up. I don't propose that this is the absolute best way to play the hole for everyone. However, if you feel comfortable with that quarterback shot and you think you can make it more often than not, this is going to give you a chance at an albatross each and every time. You may make it, you might not, you know. So it all depends on you and your skill level and what you want to do in the tournament. But you know what? It's doable and I believe in you. Good luck. Welcome to hole number seven. This is one of my favorite par fours of the entire tournament. I've got my extra mile and a katana ball here because we've got a reasonably generous win to play this shot. 10% max on the adjustment. And I do have like four bars of topspin here. Just pay attention to the wind. That's all I'm going to say. You might need to bring a Titan ball here if we've got a heavy, uh, heavy headwind. Or, you know, we might need to add a little bit of side spin or less top spin. All of those things are possibilities depending on how the tournament holes set up. I'm looking to try out those new practice holes. I don't know that we'll have the update by the time this tournament goes live, but it's all classified. What are we supposed to know? Get it to the end of this fairway here. 333 is the yardage. And I'm playing the second shot here with my Goliath in minimum distance. I give this one 2.25 bars of topspin. And we're going to set this one up with the top of the yellow touching the rough. Aim this ball guy directly at the pin. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that new practice uh, situation, new update? I think it's going to be pretty cool. It should affect our ability to practice shots just like this and hopefully get them dialed in without, um, you know, without as much trouble. It should be interesting. It's going to change the dynamic of the game once again, and I just think it's a lot of fun. So here we go. Center it up beautifully and just hit that perfect, perfect ball. That's what you're looking for every single time. You got it in you. I do too. Let's go hole number eight. Welcome to hole number eight, the final part three of this tournament. I've got a sniper level six and a quasar ball. And the idea for me here, max left and about like about 0.5 top spin or so. This is a strong rookie tailwind. Take note of that 4.4 direct tailwind. And I've got the blue ring just dipping down into the bunker. Now look very carefully that second bounce and you see how it is pointed just right at the pin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have a nice clean adjustment here. Back before I used any kind of grid or any lines on the screen. And really, you just want to make sure to get that perfect shot. This is a finicky hole. It can be a little bit difficult. But once we find that line, boy, it's a sweet, sweet ride. Let's go. Good luck. Let's get those drops. Hole number nine. And we find ourselves on one of those southern pines Par fives that you're really just doing your very best to try to make sure you get that eagle. So I've got a power five ball and a big topper. And as you can see, I'm looking at how much overpower. That's about three rings of overpower right there. So that's what I'm correspondingly trying to do. The idea here is that more often than not, you will need to adjust in overpower unless you have higher level clubs. We want to bounce just before that rough and roll it up and slightly to the left of the second fairway because there are some tall trees on the right-hand side you don't want to contend with. You can see them just in the right side of that shot right there. So with a good drive, then you're going to come in with a nice, long, big dog here 
The drive, I played 10%. This one is 10% as well. Now, I'm playing it safe and smart, and I'm not doing that second bounce rough bump, which if you do, I would use max topspin or close to it. Instead, I have to give some overpower here, so I'm using a little bit less spin, and my goal here is completely and entirely to get it nice and close wedge range or just onto the green. So we're bouncing past that hazard, rolling up, excellent excellent position for me here given the level of the clubs on this account that we're using in these examples because then what this does is it leaves me a beautiful straightforward wedge shot for the eagle now again there are far more aggressive ways that you can play this hole but if you've got that extra mile four to six kind of account and uh, you're looking to try to still compete at a reasonable level understand that in in tier one tier two Many, many players are only going to get a birdie or or worse on this hole. And I don't think that's bad, but you can be the one to get the eagle. Good luck in this yet-to-be-named classified Southern Pines 9-Hole Cup Tournament. I hope you've enjoyed my rookie walkthrough for this classified Southern Pines 9-Hole Cup. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget, subscribe now to Ehrlich Gaming so you don't miss out on any of my future content. Good luck in the tournament.